Welcome, welcome, welcome to another OU Insider Under the Visor YouTube Live powered by Jenny King. It is OU Texas Weekend. Parker, take it away. Yes, folks, Jana King is the greatest team to ever clean and a proud partner of OU Athletics. They deliver spotless results from stadiums to any size business across the country. You can visit them at JanaKing.com for unbeatable commercial cleaning services. Go Sooners. That's J-A-N-I-K-I-N-G.com to touch base with Jana King about their unbeatable commercial cleaning services. We're very thrilled to have them on board as the title sponsor of the OU Insider Under the Visor podcast. Uh, also want to give you a quick word from our friends over at Mando. And folks, you've likely heard us talk about Mando before. It's full body deodorant. That's right. You can use it on your whole body. It's dermatologist tested, gentle on all your body parts, controls odor for 72 hours, clinically proven to do so. And you can choose from four cologne quality scents or unscented if you want to get stealthy. Now, uh, Brandon and I both use Mando. We both have Mando products in our regular lineup. The bourbon leather body wash is a go-to for each of us, particularly on road trips. And guess what? Mando's starter pack is perfect for new customers who are looking to get tapped into the Mando experience. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, a cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash and the deodorant wipes, as well as free shipping. And guess what? We have a discount code to help you get hooked on our favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you use code INSIDER at shopmando.com. That's S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O dot com. Another quick reminder before we get going, download the Autograph app if you haven't already. Link.ag.fan slash boomer. And you can sign up with promo code Boomer to download the Autograph app for free and start earning rewards and interacting with a vibrant community of Sooner fans via the Autograph app. All right, Brandon, where to begin? There's a lot to discuss this week. There always is when OU Texas is on the horizon. Yeah, it's a it's a crazy weekend uh, ahead. I, I mean, it's not just OU Texas. I mean, I know that's what everybody wants to talk about here, but I mean, the college football slate is freaking awesome this weekend. It's amazing. Um, I have to say this because I promised them I would. Uh, Ready? How do you say his last name? I don't want to butcher it. Mustafa Rai. Mustafa Rai. I almost said Mustafa Rai. Mustafa Rai. Um, I told him I would wear this. He's got another one he's sending me, the OU Texas one with the upside down, whatever. But this is one. You'll see the other one on another podcast. I think the pregame podcast I will be wearing. But you can go to at Double Team or just Double Team dot com um or you can go to at double team on twitter instagram shop double team on twitter shop at shop double team excuse me on twitter um and you can get this and there's a whole bunch of other cool stuff thunder mavericks uh some cool hats all that type of stuff but this is this is the type of stuff i i only wear this when it's big big game weekends and he asked me to do so so i'm gonna be wearing the polo polos this weekend uh or this week not this weekend this week for him on all the lives and pods and stuff to help him out. So yeah, at shop, at shop double team uh, on Twitter, or just go to shop double team.com and you can get all of this stuff. Uh, if you guys are interested. All right. Uh, yeah. Huge weekend, huge, huge weekend of college football. OU Texas, obviously Oregon, Ohio state. Um, I'm trying to think there's like several other big games, right? If I'm, I'm off, off the top of my head, I'm trying to remember all of them. There's it's a huge slate. But even last weekend, the slate was supposed to suck, Parker. Just it suck. was supposed to suck. And 2000 ha- 2007 happened all over again. <laughs> I felt like I was 24. Um, you know what? And you said it best on the podcast earlier today. Oklahoma was right where they needed to be, sitting their happy butts at home, watching the chaos go down. Because you don't want to be a ranked team on weekends like that. Nope. The voodoo is not good, <laughs> so it's it is not good for the ranked team. So Oklahoma, obviously, I, first off, I want to start with the A people. I know it doesn't matter, but you're yet, right; it does not matter. But it does. I know people say it doesn't, but it does because it sets people up with the the vote. The, I'm listening. I'm listening. They're Continue. human. 
the the committee is going to be human and they're going to base everything off of what the rankings are previously stated with the AP. That's what you do. Yeah, you can throw everybody in a jumble and say, well, this team did this and this and this. And you have all these configurations of how and calculations of how you guys rank stuff. But at the end of the day, humans still have to enter the rankings and you're going to go, okay, where does the AP and the coaches have them? Okay, so let's start. This is our base and let's see if we agree or disagree, right? I think that's generally how the first one kind of goes. And so it does matter. And I've never seen three teams tie for an 18th spot. That was stupid. I mean, it happens. Like that's. I can't remember the last time that's happened. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's math, right? I, I get it, but they've got to figure out a way to to not do that. Like why? Well, because, and I like how Josh Pate does it, where it's like, and I guess that's where I'm going with this is, at the end of the day, let's. I know there's people that are going to say, "Oh, you." their offense, whatever. But even on a neutral field, are you taking a are you taking BYU over Oklahoma? You're not. Are you taking Iowa State over Oklahoma? You are not. Nobody is. I'm I'm sure somebody would, but there's somebody trying to just be a, a contrarian would would do that. I mean, the reality is is you're not if they were to face each other you would oh you would be favored like that's the reality of the situation so like that's that's where i'm at that's where i'm at with some of these rankings i'm like come on man like let's 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 be real with this and it just it's gotten almost absurd like arkansas i know they're four and two but they probably should be ranked right mm. Again, like this is, it, it's a matter of subjectivity. As it is, it is, are. but like, because <sighs> Arkansas, yeah, Arkansas, and it's funny, you know, Lincoln Riley talked all that noise over the weekend in his post game press conference about the, about USC being two plays away from being five and oh, very familiar message from Lincoln Riley there, right? But in Arkansas's case, they legit are two plays away from being six and oh, actually, because when you look at, their loss to Oklahoma State and their loss to Texas A&M. I think that's the reason Arkansas is not ranked is because of the loss to Oklahoma State. And Oklahoma State just doesn't look like a very good football team right now, Brandon. They don't. The loss to Texas A&M is forgivable. They look solid. They hammered Missouri over the weekend, and Arkansas kept it close. They were in position for quite a while to go and win that football game and couldn't seal the deal. But... Mm. That loss to Oklahoma State is going to be a significant negative point on their resume that season, oh, yeah. in all likelihood. The way the season is trending for Oklahoma State in particular. Yeah, it's going to be rough for them at the same time, right? Um, I. It feels like Texas is the number one team in the country. Right. Like, I think we can all kind of agree they feel like they're the number one team in the country right now. Um, you know, you, you this game coming up for Oklahoma, it's big. Uh, I think, <laughs> I think I can Oklahoma lose this ball game and still move up in the rankings. No, no, they lose the, they lose the game and they're moving down. That's something that is like, likely without president. So if Oklahoma, let's say Oklahoma, like, and this is why I ask, if Oklahoma took them, they, they're they driving and they just, you know, something happens on the last drive where they miss a field goal or something to maybe win the ball game or stuff, they drop, you think? Yes. Even yes. against the number one team in the country, neutral, neutral field, you think? Yeah, okay. no doubt. Okay. Okay, interesting. We have, we have our first super chat of the evening and it comes from case and holsey and by the way folks if you want to ensure that your question will get answered or that we will address the topic that you would like us to address throw us a super chat we guarantee that we will address every single super chat by the end of this live stream that's the promise we make to you every single week and generally they get rolling quickly so you got a question you want to get in 
Uh, you can absolutely enter it via the traditional chat, but obviously with as many questions and as many comments as we get over the course of a stream, we can't promise that we will get to them all or even some of them. But you throw us a super chat, we will talk mm -hmm. about what you want to talk about. No questions asked. You give us a super chat, we'll read it, we'll discuss. Case and Holsey threw us $2. Thanks, Kaysen. Uh, By the way, doesn't matter what amount you attach. It could be a dollar, it could be $10, it could be whatever you feel inclined to toss our way. But Kaysen asks, confidence levels on Burks, Tatum, and Desan, 1 through 10. <laughs> My confidence on Burks right now is one. a 1. <laughs> I, I do not expect him to play. And if you've listened, if you listen to us last week, if you listen to me on the radio on a daily basis, uh, that opinion really hasn't changed uh, ever since the conclusion of the Auburn game. The prognosis has never really indicated that Dion Burks was on track to get back for this Texas game, much as Brent Venables would like to believe, would like you to believe otherwise, and would like Texas to believe otherwise. Because I mean, that's the nature of gamesmanship, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I do not imagine that Deion Burks is going to be available in this football game for the Sooners. Uh, Tatum and Desant, like you can't go all the way to 10 because you have to allow for the possibility Something to happen, of yeah. aggravation on the practice field, right? But both those guys are at an 8 or a 9. Like they, sh it, mm -hmm. There's no reason they shouldn't be available barring some complication or some aggravation of their current condition. Correct. And people keep asking why Burks. Burks is soft tissue thing. And that's about as much as I'll dive into it. It's a soft tissue issue. Yeah. Rhymed. And, um, if Brent Venables won't say it, we are neither. <laughs> Correct. Correct. If Brent Venables won't address the specifics of the injury, the odds that you'll get us to address the specifics of the injury are not high because if the program doesn't have any qualms about addressing it, then Brent Venables will call it what it is. For instance, he talked about Andrew Anthony's cleanup procedure earlier uh, tonight on his coaches. So, which is some, something that we discussed over at OU Insider. It's just, it's been one thing after another with that ACL that he injured last year in the Red River shootout. And so that, that there remain some injuries though. And Burks has one such injury. Nick Anderson has one such injury that are, that are dealt with on a need to know basis, as far as the specifics of what they're dealing with. So, yeah. Uh, and again, like, and there's no disrespect to any of you all out there, but uh, you, you don't need to know specifically what is wrong with Dion Burks or Nick Anderson. What you need to know if you're a fan is the timeline, right? And the timeline is indefinite right now for both Burks and Anderson. Yeah. Um, it, 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 <laughs> it's unfortunate. So Jacoby Johnson's going to have to step up. And I, I look, I'm going to say this. Okay, say I, it. I know that this past, I know the previous week we said we don't expect him to do anything uh, at Auburn. It's been three weeks now that he's been at wide receiver come, you know, Saturday. Yep. It's time. It's time. And I, I fully expect him to be not just a part of the game plan, but a big part of the game plan. I spoke to somebody earlier today. And they feel like Jacoby Johnson can be a difference maker. It wasn't me that he spoke to, by the it way. It wasn't Just him. To clear that up. It wasn't me. It was not Parker. Now, I want to kind of rein that back a little bit. They threw kind of a caveat out there about it and said he has to continue to grasp what is being asked of him. He's doing it so far, but trust has to continue to be worked and maintained with Latrell and obviously Emma Jones. If there's any sort of bump in the road with as little of experience as he has at the wide receiver position with Oklahoma only being three weeks, and I grant granted. Granted, there is a freshman, right? I they get all summer, right? They get the seven on sevens and they get all that type of crap. But really, the coaches only get fall camp to really look at some of these freshmen at wide receiver. And obviously, there's a Zion Raggins of the world and stuff like that that have they've been able to really 
make a huge jump, right? Um, and and impress Emmett Jones and all those guys. It can happen. And I think Jacoby Johnson's talented enough. I think he understands the game well enough. And Brent Venables talked about it, Parker. He talked about it two weeks ago. He said, look, Jacoby's coming in understanding what and how to attack a corner. Because he is a cornerback by trade. So he's learned all of the tricks of the trade of if he sees a cornerback in a certain situation, he knows exactly what he needs to do to get open. And so that has to has to be consistent. And it also has to be consistent with Michael Hawkins, Parker. Like, they have got to gel. If there's no gelling with the quarterback, that move was nothing. Nothing. No. So, it, but do you think Jacoby Johnson has to be a big fixture this week? Because I think he does. I think yeah, there's I mean, no question he does. Him and Hester have to play big. Because they're the biggest guys. Because they are big. Yeah. I mean, that's what it comes down to. They are big, and they're the only guys with size right now amongst the group of wide receivers for Oklahoma that you expect could reasonably have an impact. And I know Ivan Carion has seen the field a little bit, but he's he's not there yet. Uh, he's, he's struggled to create separation. That's the big thing for him right now. It's not an issue of the physicality or the cognitive readiness or anything like that. It's just uh, he... He just can't quite separate like you need him to at wide receiver mm -hmm. right now. So with Jacoby Johnson and J.J. Hester, they offer that intriguing blend of size and speed and the ability to go make a play on a 50-50 ball. And you're going to need that, man. You're going to need yep. that because um, it's great to have speed guys like a Jock West Petaway or a Zion Reagans, but you've got to have multiple dimensions to your passing attack. It can't just be speed guys out there because – if you're rolling out Reagans and Petaway and Thompson, man, you're going to get bullied at the line of scrimmage by those Texas defensive backs. That's just the brutal reality. You're going to get bullied by those guys. I, so, I, apparently, you're like six foot four, according to Drake X. Really? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> somebody, said, yeah. Somebody said you're skinny and tall. Go. You can go play. Go catch some jump balls. I'm like, I'm six one, so I'd probably be yeah, six two like, in cleats. Yeah. Problem is, I I don't have near the vert that JJ Hester and Jacoby Johnson have. That would be my shortcoming. Would have loved to have tried it twenty years. That in the forty times played, but that in the forty it, time. Um, they the Jacoby Jacob Matthews with the super chat. Appreciate you, dollar nine nine. Why stop with Jacoby? Let's switch Canick to tight end. Canick's actually been playing well at linebacker. I don't. I. I don't. Yeah, um, and, you know, you think, okay, linebacker, that's exactly the same type of dude that can go play tight end, flip sides of the ball, right? Uh, Anik 6'2". Mm -hmm. He that's looks Parker fine. and I square in the eyes, guys. Like that's, Yeah, it, yeah. Like, Anik has fine size for a linebacker. He does not have ideal size for a tight end. <laughs> Hola not. Kyle says Parker has the same speed as J.J. Hester. Um, J.J. Hester burnt an Auburn corner. Yeah, I would not have burned <laughs> so, that corner. No, that dude, Hand that up, dude is fast. Wouldn't have done it. No. So, um, I know people think that JJ Hester's slow, but he's definitely not. He is actually a fast. He's a fast. He gets separation. Yeah. Well, like, and you know, if you got a little bit of twitch to you, it's kind of hard not to be fast when you're that you tall know, because you got such long strides. Who think about the plays that he made against Auburn? Who did he remind you of? This person's still playing in college. Uh, just not at Oklahoma anymore. Uh, they Theo look Weiss? just is that is that where you're looks going with that? Just like Theo Weiss. Can you see what I'm talking about on that? I movie? can see what you're talking about. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I think Theo's much. got a little bit more twitch to his. He game does, there, but, but that I thought that play where he. You know, made people miss, and it looked like his knee might have been down, but it really wasn't down, and he kind of scraped right above the grass, the plane of the grass. So I thought that was – like instantly I was like, oh, that looked just like the Oise out there. Yeah. So The Oise against Baylor in 2019, Yeah, it's right? exactly the plays I was talking in my head uh -huh. too when I saw it. <laughs> um, Shiny918, 
Uh, at this point, any chance Anderson and Anthony end up taking a red shirt? I, if I, I would expect man, that, for I both would of those say guys. yes. Yeah, I yes. would bet. I'd expect yes. that for both those guys. Uh, mm-hmm. If if you get those two back at any point, at any point, mm-hmm. uh, the overwhelming odds are that it would be deep enough in the season that they wouldn't exceed the four game limit for a medical waiver. And, and I would. I, I, by no means am I saying count on those guys coming back because you should not do that. No. Um, Jesus saves $5. Yes, he does. Um, he, I don't know if he saves $5, but yes, thank you so much for the $5. Um, the question is for both of you. The defense is set. Does BV look outside for any offensive coaches? Or does he run it back? I, so you're talking about it, 2025. Yeah, and this is so early to do this. Like we're Yeah. It's we're, we're talking about what five games into the season now, six games in the season now, and you're 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 trying to I guess back the bus over the offensive coaches, and they have not had a healthy lineup all season long. That's not no. fair. That's not I think what BB is gonna do is he's probably gonna give if this continues to be the trend, and Parker, I want to see if you agree with me. And they just can't be healthy. It's probably going to be a mulligan, to be honest. They're probably going to get a mulligan this year. Would be now. I'm not saying they won't add what? a few players here or there. What didn't happen after year one that we all thought was going to happen? Oh, every, we thought everybody's going to get canned. Uh, Ted Roof. Bingo, bingo. Yeah. Everybody thought, okay, Roof is the sacrificial lamb. Mm-hmm. Never happened. Roof is the guy that's got to be fired. After six and seven. And the defense took a huge jump because he didn't do that. He stayed steadfast. And I think that's probably the right thing to do, particularly with the talent that's going to be back next year. Assuming it all comes back, they can get all the NIL and everything, you know, situated. I, both sides of the ball, you really don't want to play musical chairs with your coaching staff when you have that. You want as much continuity, right? as possible when you have that much talent coming back. Parker, they could have, what is it, like 17, 18 guys return next year as starters, potentially? I mean, who are the guys you're definitely losing? You're losing Stutzman, Woody Washington, Billy Bowman, three. So you're losing eight on defense, that's it. Like, for sure. For sure. Obviously, Dominique Williams probably. Ethan Downs, you're losing Ethan Ethan, Oh, Ethan Downs. Okay, so you get maybe seven... So you may have seven, six, seven returners on on defense, but your offense. Who are you losing? Offensive lineman. Who? That's pretty much it. Um, Tarquin. That's it. Everybody else can return. Yeah, I guess that tracks. Mm-hmm. Everybody else can return. Wow. So, you return 10 guys, so you could return 17, 18 guys. Well, Tarquin and Hickman. Hickman's done. Hickman. I thought Hickman has another year. No, he's done. Are we 100% sure on that? I thought yes. he had an, yes. I thought he had two 100%. years. Okay. No. Nope. Well, you, you still have Everett, so that to me that counts. Like, you have Everett as a starter. He started okay, multiple sure. years at Oklahoma. Yeah. So there's your center. So, I mean, there you go. You're looking really good on offense and defense next year. So I, I and this is like we're we're totally getting too far ahead, in my opinion, of all this. But um anyways. What is one of the biggest keys for you this week? Oklahoma's gonna win. What's the biggest key for you? Be creative offensively. Mm-hmm. I think that I, I, on a very fundamental level that's where it has to start you've got to have some nuance to your scheme that we have not seen this year and that goes for both the run game and the pass game like we got to see wrinkles that we have yet to see through five games because if you're as predictable as you have been offensively to this point in the year texas is going to feast i mean you got to be able to create looks that they're unfamiliar with and i will say this brand i think i mentioned this on the podcast earlier today but what gives me optimism going into this matchup 
that Oklahoma is going to be able to make some things happen offensively against Texas is that Michael Hawkins is going to be able to game plan for Texas's defense way better than Texas's defense is going to be able to game plan for Michael Hawkins. So they got six quarters of film on him. That's it. Mm-hmm. And those are six very mundane quarters of film as well. It wasn't even the offense that he's really running yet, right? Like that that's what people Yeah, think- so that and that's kind of what I'm getting at is you're going to be able to create looks that Texas has not seen on film, at least not from him. And so if you can leverage that to your advantage and execute, right? Execution is going to be huge for Oklahoma. And I, the opportunities have been there at times for this offense to this point in the year. Obviously, it hasn't been great, but like, let's not act like there haven't been opportunities for this offense to generate big plays or to hit shots down the field. They just have to go and execute, and they can't shoot themselves in the foot with penalties. Because and mm-hmm. that kind of flows right into execution, though, uh, as well as. You know, hit Bauer Sharp for 30 something yards and Jake Roberts commits an offensive pass interference and you're marching it right back, right? That can't happen. That can't happen. You're only going to get so many chances to create chunk plays like that. It's not going to be the norm ever in a game like this, least of all against the number one team in the country. So when you get those opportunities, you can't undermine yourself. Right. Look, I'm reading the chat and people are like, you forgot. J.J. Hester's a senior, and he's, you know, blah, 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 blah. J.J. Hester has been injured multiple years. He has he can come back. Years. He can come back. He can come back. So, yeah. Um, a couple of people have also asked the shirt again. Uh, shop, at Shop Double Team. Uh, re, ready, Mustafari, right? Right? Did I say it right? Mustafa Rai. Mustafa Rai, ready, Mustafa Rai, the old OU punter uh, and his – uh, he asked me to wear this stuff this week. I got another one I'll be wearing on the pregame podcast. But you can go at shop double team to get this um, if you want to. I, hey, I want to say this before we get moving. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's free, but it helps us. Like the more you guys sub- subscribe, the better it is. And the more we can do for you guys on this channel because – the more ads that we can get and, and and we don't want to read a bunch of ads to you guys, but it helps us with content. We have NIL that we can throw at some players. If that becomes the case, um, all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, I turned my hat around side uh, front ways just to kind of crack a joke because people had thought it was going to be one of the beat Texas hats and it's just a Mustang hat. Cause I just came back from a kid's game. Um, so, um, Anyways, yes, subscribe to this YouTube channel. It helps us. We're trying to do some cool NIL stuff and, you know, to help out and do everything that we can. And it does. It helps in a big, big way. Um, Anyway, super chat from Drake X. He said. What's the team feeling like? How is the offense coming along? You want to answer that? Oh yeah, sorry. I was I was kind of kicking that to you. I already had the next super chat lined up. But, oh yeah, Virgil. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, look, the shoot, man. The team feels confident. Like there's a quiet confidence from within. Kind of reminds me of last year in that sense because I remember I remember having several people in that building tell me leading into the Texas game last year when, of course, Oklahoma was what eight nine point underdog. Several people just saying straight up, "We're gonna win." Now, it hasn't been that explicit this time around. I don't know if anybody wants to put bad juju out there into the ether, but th- there's that same quiet confidence. And I think that's, uh, that. quite frankly, that originates with, or at the very least has its root in, a freshman quarterback that is very much built for these types of moments from a mental capacity. And he's not somebody that's going to be overwhelmed by the moment. Um, Mm -hmm. We know that about Michael Hawkins. Is that to say he comes out and lights it up on Saturday? Not necessarily, but make no mistake, that kid's going to be motivated to play the game of his life. And he's very much earned a reputation within that building as a film junkie. 
somebody that's going to study and study and study for hours on end until he feels like he can go out there on the field on a Saturday and know exactly what he's looking at every single snap lining up across from a defense. And so I expect he's going to be well-prepared. I expect that the offense and the scheme from Seth Luttrell is going to be more of a creative one. And I think the Sooners should be able to make some headway against this Texas defense and put points on the board and stay in this football game. And to me, Brandon, I just, I I can't fathom the fact that this is a 14 point weird. The the, the Sooners are 14 point dog. Cause to me, like, and I'll say this every year, I've said it every year, except for 2022 when we all kind of knew, Oh, you was walking into a buzzsaw sans Dylan and Gabriel. But if you don't have a very, obvious extenuating circumstance like that year in year out this game ought to be a pick em, man because we've seen enough of these games to understand mm-hmm. they're one possession games man that's just how it goes this game at the cotton bowl outside of that 2022 debacle brandon it's been a one possession game every single year for a decade it's very true no matter i I think you got to look back. I think it was Oklahoma came in just on fire in 2013, right? And and Texas was – they weren't playing well. And I think 2014, kind of the same thing, right? Um, obviously, Texas won in 2013. They just shocked the crap out of one of the – I mean, Oklahoma had just beat Notre Dame, right? And they just – They were on fire. They were one of the top four or five teams in the country. And then, bam, they lost to Texas 2014. They beat Tennessee. They come in, they're hot. I I know they lost to TCU the week before, but they still were one of the better teams in the country or viewed it that way and struggled against Texas, barely beat them. 2015, they lost to Texas with Baker. That was a playoff team, Parker. Texas wasn't even ranked, I don't think, right? No, they weren't. So it it can happen. Anything can happen, as Parker said, in this rivalry. All right. Back yeah, back to super chat. By the way, by the way, Boomer 129. I and I see you whining down there in the comments. I did not tell you not to be concerned with the health of the team. I just said, look, I there are reasons that we're not going to disclose the specific injuries that Deion Burks and Nick Anderson are dealing with. And we could talk in circles for hours about why that is. And I'm sure you have valid complaints, but I have valid responses, valid answers as to why we can't and won't do that. Please understand. Even if you don't agree with that, Virgil Walker threw us $20 and said, you fellas are the best. Keep on keeping on. Much love, fam. Please subscribe. I'm subscribed. I support these men, and you should, too. Thank you, Virgil. It was awesome to see you last week, man. Keep doing the Lord's work in a very literal sense. Yes. He's a pastor, right, if I remember correctly? That is correct. Uh, Bro threw us $5 and said, what's going to be the main difference in the offense with Hawkins at quarterback after two weeks as the guy? His legs are obvious. Anything else of note? Well, Less I, RPO, baby. Yeah, and I think I was about to say, very <laughs> first thing, and you saw it against Auburn, mm-hmm. the RPO is history. You will mm-hmm. not see that anymore. I love the creativity that they have. Um, and I think you saw a little bit of it during the Auburn game. Like, look, they were running – they were getting Bauer sharp in situations. And there were a few times when, you know, it was a missed block here. It was a missed block there. Um, just that kind of ruined the tight end screens, right? Like it was little things. The timing just was off just a bit. Just, it was just off a little bit. And I think those are the type of things that you'll see um, them be just, more proficient in and 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 the timing will be better because look they were starting to put and implement all those things the week of Auburn like these were all like they just decided to scrap the whole you know and they didn't I want people to understand like the offense isn't going to be completely different you're still going to see RPOs it's just not going to be as much you're still going to have a bunch of option routes right you're still going to have a bunch of um 
just I'm trying to think. I, I think you're going to see more gap scheme blocking. I think you're going to see more outside zone. I think you're going to see more. I think you're going to see more read option with Michael Hawkins. Get him. Uh, and they haven't shown the read. That is one thing they have not shown, Parker. They did not do a lot of read up. Did they do a read option during Auburn? I don't think they did. They ran a couple. They ran a couple. I guess he um, just handed it off every time because yeah. I don't remember him riding the mesh point and then pulling it. So, I mean, that I think those are the things you'll see that are different. And I, the other thing is, is if Invenable said this post game, Parker, and I totally agree, and I think you'll see more of it. They've got to start trying to attack the defense where they're giving them space. And what I mean by that is if they're going to get up and they're going to press and they're going to play single high safety all day and just blitz you endlessly and say, I dare you to try to beat us over top. Beat them over the top. Yeah. Straight up. Um, Drake X threw us another two bucks and said, is OU insider hiring? I'll make us some big boy Dallas. Well, Drake, listen, I'm, I'm a businessman. I like making money. It enables us to hire more staff, mm -hmm. give you guys better content and more content at that. So heck, if you can make me money, get in my DMS. I'm all about it. Slide into his DMS. He says so because Parker is a business man. No, I'm not a biz. Well, I guess technically <laughs> you I'm, are. So am I. <laughs> I, I we we are a business. I alone <laughs> am not a business. But Tyler Walker threw us two dollars just now. It's his very first super chat contribution. Thanks, Tyler. He says Jacoby percentage of being a factor this week. Seventy five percent. It depends on what much? you mean by being a factor. You know, like is he going to catch a pass? At wide receiver. Hundred percent. He yeah. will see snaps at wide receiver. Um, if being a factor means he goes for 50 yards or catches five passes or whatever your benchmark is, well, then I, I don't know. And I think I, I would simply be throwing darts if I tried to take a stab at what his output looks like on Saturday. Cause we just, we have no idea. And we really can't know until we see it. We're flying blind right now with Jacoby Johnson at wide receiver because of how new everything is as far as that transition and just the reality that he was, I mean, he was active for the Auburn game. Mm -hmm. uh, they switched Cade McIntyre's numbers. So that told you that they were planning on Jacoby Johnson seeing the field at some point, at least potentially, and he didn't. And so to this point, zero collegiate snaps at wide receiver for the kid. Zero. Um, shiny nine, one, eight. Gave us $5. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. He said, 14-point dogs. Everyone giving us zero chance. Insert Nate Diaz. I'm not surprised MFers mean. I mean, they're the number one team in the country. Oklahoma has struggled offensively. I think I think the, the, the big question is, is can Quinn Ewers hold up the whole game if Oklahoma is getting to him and granted yes texas offensive line is supposed to be really good and they played exceptionally well against michigan michigan i don't know that they're as creative as far as their pressures i just went <laughs> yeah okay glad you had the same uh reaction i did um uh sorry i i just went completely blank and there's for there's a reason for it parker go ahead that is that is the largest super chat in the history of this channel holy kyler. smokes kyler eckberg through us and five hundred dollars and here's why i know you guys have i there, there's been a bunch of storms in the state of oklahoma recently roof damage lots of it um let me pull everything up that I have on E2 Roofing Company out oh, of Tulsa. Oh, which will... said, dang, that's half a ticket to the game. <laughs> so E2 Roof Company, you can call Kyler and his, they are insured, they are certified, they're everything as far as the state goes. They're in Oklahoma City, they're in Tulsa, they will be everywhere. They will come. All you got to do is say you got 
their name from OU Insider and or Under the Visor Live, Under the Visor Podcast, and he will hook you up. You can call him at 918-212-4944. He's licensed and insured. He's a good dude. Um, Kyler, we've been talking about him on all the podcasts and all the stuff. I talked to him on the podcast this morning. I talked about him. Talked about him this past weekend. We talked about him last week. Uh, he's a... He's a friend of OU Insider, and we appreciate Kyler and E2 Roofing Company. So give them a call anytime you need any help with your roof, because he will be there and help you out. And I do believe you will also get free gutter cleaning as well. Kyler, you can Ooh, free gutter you cleaning. can, can get with you that. can correct me if I'm wrong here. Anyways, back to what I was talking about. Do you think? Yeah, oh, and free inspections, he says. Do you think that Quinn Ewers, with the injury, because it's such a weird injury, right? It's only been three weeks, and it was like a torn or partially torn abdominal muscle. Is that early coming back from that? I'm sorry. Do, do you again, see though? Arch Manning this uh, game? No, I think it's going to be Quinn. Um I would say this is a game that Quinn is probably hungry to start, and this has kind of always been the timetable for him. If you go back to when that injury was first suffered, the mm -hmm. I mean, the thing that I can't remember if it was Sark that said it at the time or Pete Thamel or whoever reported it, but that target date was always the OU game, and so yeah, target look, dates I, and all, but like yeah, no, is it I, is it something that can be tweaked if something goes wrong? Because I remember like he did it, he was just. It was yeah, so well, weird I mean, in how shoot, he got I've, injured. I've never torn an abdominal muscle, so I I won't yeah. pretend to have firsthand insight on that. But I I will say this: uh, any injury can be aggravated. Any injury of that yeah. type can be aggravated if you take a hit a certain way, or you move or twist or uh, gyrate a certain way. It can be done, and so I I mean I would imagine that Steve Sarkeesian is going to have. Uh, no qualms about inserting Arch Manning into the game if it comes to that because of what Arch has proven over the, what, three starts that he's had is that he can play at a pretty high level. He can. And he offers a dimension with his mobility that I just don't think is there with Quinn Ewers, and that's kind of why my thought was, I think if you're Oklahoma, you'd rather see Quinn Ewers in this football game than Arch Manning. Because uh, you know at least you know what you're getting with Quinn Ewers. You don't have as much of an idea of what you're getting with Arch Manning, but... You know what you're getting with Ewers, and what you learned last year was that what you're getting is a guy that you can beat straight up. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess. But do you think you see any Arch Manning at all? Like, do you think they throw him in there for anything? Like, just to kind of make Oklahoma uh, prepare for I mean, him? Maybe, maybe, I mean, like, maybe it's just a handoff or two, or. You know, but you still have to prepare. Like you're wasting your time preparing Correct. for. Yeah, no, I get what you're feet. saying, and that could, yeah, that could absolutely be something Sarkeesian deploys if for no other reason than to just throw a wrinkle at Oklahoma. Yeah. Um. By the way, Charles Crow flies high in the chat. Said he had he had given five hundred dollars to another podcast on YouTube. All right, where where's our five hundred, Charles? Come on now. Be you nice tease. to us. You tease. You tease, I dare you to do it. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> oh, All man. right. Um anyways, so you should you should read the name that keeps being popped up in the uh, chat right now. It's kind of funny. Um Which, oh yes. Okay, I'm seeing this. Um over and over and over because he reported something on a wide receiver. So which was already asked oh no what we thought. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, if that's you guys if have that's already all, asked if that's all thought. that was reported, then yes. I mean, that's that's commensurate with everything we've said for a week and a half. I mean, that's yeah. like we've told you all not to. Yeah. Don't don't get your hopes up for oh. Texas and Drake know. X, appreciate you in the super chat. Um we're cool Dang. with we're cool. Drake's with... trying to build a monopoly here. Yeah. Like I cool. said, Drake, my Twitter DMs are open. And I'm not I make I, us like, money. I'm all about it. Correct. And at the same time, I'll say this. Um, everybody's just trying to feed their family. So we are we are not one of those type of people that are 
always out to say negative things about people or do all that like this is not how we roll so. and to answer to answer bagman's question he asked what's parker's drama with scoop i have no drama with scoop as no. a brand none whatsoever um i th there is one particular individual one individual with whom i have a, a, a so, some long-standing animosity which quite frankly disagreement I even, yeah i don't even know where that originated um because it's been there on the other individual's side for years and years and years. And I don't claim to know where it began, but that's the reality. Um, and uh, uh, there was a listener that asked, would uh, would a thousand dollars in a podcast be an OU podcast record? Yes, it was. And if, if you want to give us a thousand dollars, by all means. <laughs> Throw it at us. Uh, oh, we got twenty dollars. Oh, I thought I thought when you said that, I was like, whoa. <laughs> uh, South on Main Arts said Friday night, SBI thirty five victory exit. Look up at the twenty second floor of the Katie. You will see OU logo blaring bright on my balcony. Honk your horn and make noise. This game matters. It's time to beat Texas. See you at the game. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the twenty dollars. The victory exit. Okay, so what is the Katie? Like, explain that. Write that in the chat. Like, we're five years old, so we know what the hell you're talking about. But that's cool. I am say that, like, question yeah, being um, sincerely and also being cool, being sincere. Hey, Hart Robinson said he'll donate $500 if y'all do a podcast on edibles. We'll do it. We will. Do As a matter of fact, the funny part about you all ask that is that we've had people... We've had THC companies reach out to us about it, and we've kind of nixed that idea. But if you're going to throw money at us to have his podcast on it, I'm a whore. I will do any of that type of stuff for me. <laughs> 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 that is going to be clipped and cut yes and it will out there on twitter yes it oh, will Lord. as it should <laughs> and i'm talking about money <laughs> oh okay anyways brandon will do anything for the right price folks no 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 i have i have i have morals i have morals really Singing a different tune than you were 30 seconds ago. My wife just um, said bye in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. TCQ <laughs> asked, what? Who couldn't get along with Parker? I try to get along with everybody, TCQ. Like I said, there's one person out there, one media member that seems to have me with, with me for whatever reason. But I do my best to get along with everybody else. I yep. really do. He um, does Let's Maybe see. only fans coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like Kyle said, Brandon made Parker crack. Love it. Yeah. Yep. It's not. It's probably one of the first times it's happening. All right. Which which are you? Which go to? I don't go to dispensaries, man. I honestly don't like. I have medication that I have to take, and I get tested every month, so I can't. I can't really do that like that. So I'm. I'm a. Uh, I'm a straight and narrow guy, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, all right, back to the game. That's, back it's to the hilarious. game. We totally digress. It's man. hilarious back to that you just said I'm a straight and narrow guy. Ninety seconds after saying what you said, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, um. Anyway, yeah, we'll do a podcast on edibles for five hundred bucks. I'll make that deal. Hard. It was a thousand just a second ago. What was it dropped to five hundred? All right. Hey, back to the game. Let's stop. Like people have totally they they have completely derailed this this live. Yes, they All have. Right. John Mozzie asked, so is Burks out? Uh, we do not expect Deion Burks to be available yeah. this week. Yeah. Don't or expect him. Anderson, I wouldn't expect Anthony. I wouldn't expect I think your starting lineup at wide receiver will be Petaway, Hester. Who am I missing off the top of my head, Parker? I mean, Brendan Thompson, Brendan Thompson. Yeah. Probably, I think those would be the three. The, yeah. That three, the three. And then you'll probably um, see Jacoby Johnson, uh, Kearney, Reagan, Reagan's who Reagan's. Yeah. Reagan, Reagan's. And then, yeah, I think that would be, 
probably your six that get the most. I do think you see Jacoby Johnson. Um, yeah. Uber one twenty nine in the chat said Milton is now the fourth strongest hurricane ever recorded in the Western Hemisphere. I I'd love that we're going all variety show tonight, but yes, hey, listen. Uh, check in on your folks down there if you have any that are in the path of that hurricane because uh, with all the damage that Helene did in particular, yeah. man, the last thing those folks need is another hard hit. And unfortunately, it's coming. You know, there's nothing you can really do about it. But, is it going to be five? Is it this thing's going to be cat five when it hits? Or is I it mean, four? I, I don't know about when it hits, but if it remains the fourth strongest hurricane ever recorded, like that's obviously category five, right? Yeah, that's high end category five. Crack, Cracker Max. Some of these players are soft. I remember when Rocky Kalmus played on a fractured leg. It was a non weight bearing bone, so you really. I mean, I'm sure it hurt, but um, yeah. I, I'll say this, and this is this is interesting. We have a kid on my son's oldest team, and he has played with a cracked bone in his foot the whole season, the whole season, and he is a running back. And wide receiver for us. And he's very good, but he's a tough son of a gun. So I, I, I get where some of these fans come from as far as like being frustrated. But I, if you all understood the gravity of some of these dudes' injuries, like let's, without getting too detailed, Parker, Nick Anderson's injury, like it's legit. Yes. Very, yes. very legit. An actual serious injury. Ser- that I've been working on for like the last month, but the right thing to do before we put it up is not to have, Oh, this list will change. This will do this. We want to have, this is a final cut. This is who will be there unless something drastic happens the day before or the day of, or something of that nature. So um, we will have that up for you here over the next 36 hours. And it is going to be, a huge, it is a who's who of high school recruiting. I'll say that. Obviously, two huge ranked teams, one of the biggest games in all of college football. SEC Network's going to be there. Um, it's going to be big. I think Tim Tebow, all those guys are going to be in town. Paul Feinbaum, everybody will be at the state fair. It's going to be very fun for everybody to be around. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all there. We look forward to seeing you guys on and listening to all of our podcasts all of our lives we have some potential potentially we have some interesting content coming for you guys via youtube and ou insider vip so make sure you're subscribed right here on this channel and or whatever podcasting platform you listen to us on it helps us up immensely uh or you can go to ou insider right now you can sign up 9.95 a month or 99.95 for the whole year. We've got a ton of recruiting information that'll be going on after the game and before the game. Obviously, we'll be out in Dallas watching some of the top players uh, the night before and a few days before that as well. Uh, so we got a ton coming for you guys this week on OU Insider VIP and obviously further on down the line as the season goes along. So $9.95 a month, $9.95 for the whole year. If you're a college student or you have a .edu email, email us OU Insider at Rivals.com. We will give you OU Insider for $11.95 for the whole year. One payment, $11.95. Averages out less than $1 a month. Email us, OU Insider at Rivals.com from a .edu. We will send the promo code for you guys to be able to do that and sign up and get OU Insider for one year at $11.95. All right. For Parker Thune. Hang on. Whoop. One more super chat from Ryan Jan Bass, oh, who threw us five dollars and said, "Sooner Nation, send positive vibes that my flight from Jacksonville, Florida to Dallas doesn't get canceled." Prayers your way, Ryan. Yes, sir. We will keep you in mind. Hope you make it, man. Hope you guys make it. All now right, we can sign off. Yep. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys for watching, listening. I know those that come on later watch it. Thank you guys as well. Thank you guys that are listening. Uh, for Parker Thune, for Spencer Forsyth on the board. My name is Brandon Drum. You guys have a blessed day. We'll see you guys later.